Pac-Man Drops are on. Welcome to the back office. I have a sneaky suspicion. This is sent from me to sent from me <laughs> and to me by uh, Mr. Simon Locke. Indeed, I was expecting this, so thank you very much. Um, aren't these curious little beasts? And he paid a whole 50 British pence for them, and that's four of them. Can you tell what they are yet? They are indeed RF modulators. A bit like Marvin the Martians and his space modulators, these are Terran in nature. And what these do, they plug into your Super Nintendo or GameCube, I'm guessing, maybe anything that has that. Would that plug into a Wii, maybe? And then give you an RF out. That means the... Ooh, what's going on here? That means, of course, that the audio and the video are then encoded into a single uh, system that's then decoded by the old school tuner circuitry in your telly. And you're probably asking yourself, why has Andrew obtained four of these? And he will pay Mr. S uh, Simon for these because um, he ought to. And the reason he's obtained these is because, he being me, I have some of these tellies. So there's one from Billy Sarsted, that's that Casio Pocket TV. And I also have that TV, the Citizen one. And it would be nice to get them working again. And one easy way of getting them working, of course, is to take a standard video signal that you can get from a lot of your gadgets, which would be a composite signal, and then convert it to a regular TV tuner type signal. So even a Raspberry Pi output's a composite signal. And then this would be a really cheap way of doing it, or relatively cheap way of doing it, because discrete modulators are hard to find. If you look for them, you know, there's a company called uh, Altec, I think, or Antec or something. They used to make them back in the day, and they'd be in all your 8-bit computers. However, these at the moment are worth nothing to people. They don't have a use case, so they're getting rid of them. And look, I think there's even a tuning adjustment there on the side. So if you ever do tune those, by the way, plastic screwdriver don't use a metal one it will affect the chilling anyway let's pop the lid mm, it's all discreet look at sony it's a sony chip in there and i'll try to read the number if you're playing at home it's a sony a733m-1 that's pretty much all it it's all self-contained um so i'm just looking here not all the pins are populated so it's only um it looks like these are common and these are common, so it doesn't look like there's many pins you have to think about. I'm just going to have a little look here. Those two are definitely joined, so that's one, two, three, four connections. So just four connections. Pretty easy to do. So I'm going to get a pin out for this at some point, and then I'm going to figure out how it all works. Then remove this connector. And look at that tiny little modulator. You can fit that into lots of things. So if you've got one of those Game Gear TV things, or uh, you know, loads of uh, computers back in the day had various TV adapter modules, um, these will get them working again. So you can then just use your portable, uh, um, I'm trying to think, not portable Neo Geo. What am I thinking, guys? Come on, NEC made it. PC Engine, that had a TV on it, didn't it? Um, we can make some adaptors, so stay tuned for the adapter video. And I'm just looking at the bottom of this, this is the Nintendo 64 RF modulator, so I had it very much wrong. Nintendo 64, and yeah, they all say Nintendo 64, so yeah, I don't know. Tell me if it would work in any other Nintendo system. As ever, guys, thank you for watching.